Farmer Randy Hoffman of West Concord and his pastor Karen Larson have been talking a lot about race lately. What I saw, what happened to George Floyd, I just could not believe that. It, it, was, it was actually the first time that I said, I'm going to remember this guy's name because I, I felt there's no way that there, anyone can look at this and say that there is any justification to what happened. When George Floyd was murdered, I think there was just a very um, strong reaction here in, in my community, in this church, to find out more. The pastor decided to offer a class on anti-racism. I had, I think, 17 or 18 people out of a worshiping community of maybe 40 who wanted to take that class. And it was hard work, and I think all of us, including me, I'm certainly no expert on this subject, I was with them in this journey, and we were just finding out what the reality of the history of this country is, and our founding on the institution of slavery. They learned about redlining and inequity in home lending, education, and health care, and the frayed trust between black and brown people and the police. Really what we were investigating was our own white privilege. It wasn't just how has this hurt those people, but also how has it benefited me? Huffman says almost everyone he knows is white, and the class had a profound impact. If you were gonna ask me if I'm a racist, Probably five, six years ago, I would have said, no, I'm not a racist. But um, I realize now that, yes, I am a racist. I don't like it. And I guess it's natural to notice differences in people. But I think racism is when you make um, judgments towards a person of a different color um, for no reason at all other than than that you see that they are of a different race. His classmates were all white Christians like him. It was a safe space to learn about his own prejudices. We as white people, if we just don't care that people of color are, are held down, if we just ignore it because it's uncomfortable to us and it doesn't affect me, that's indifference. Several more classes were held by area churches. Pastor Karen says she'd like to see more education offered community-wide. There is an unspoken code that keeps us from bringing up anything controversial. I think it takes real leadership. And you know, there are key people in any community that can change the tenor significantly. Pastors in, in town certainly could. The, people involved in the schools, if they spoke out more clearly on the subject, I think that would help. And certainly city leaders, the mayor, the city council, chamber of commerce, you know, business leaders. We want to be known as a town that um, welcomes all and it's not a scary place for some people to be. Local activists in nearby Pine Island organized Black Lives Matter demonstrations this year. They drew counter demonstrations. The Confederate flag came out. I think there's a history of like white nationalism and toxic patriotism. I think it's very common in rural communities across the United States where either people are complacent and don't protest against them or there's a lot of people who are also politically libertarian who think that it's the right of white nationalists to speak out. Activists tried to get the city council to support Black Lives Matter in a statement. The council was just kind of abjectly refusing and saying, like, we're not political, which I think is a confusion about what it means to be a local politician. The city has not cooperated with Almanac on this story. Council members who were reached declined comment. A request for a statement was not responded to. His cop says it's this attitude from city leaders that frustrates and angers her. I want to see things get better for people who are like me and aren't like me. And I want to see this be a safe place for black folks to raise their families, for LGBT families to exist. Pine Island is 97% white. Not all people of color say they've had problems. Christopher Carter is black and has lived in town for the past two years with his white fiance. He has experienced racist incidents by police before. Not here, but you know, when I lived in Minneapolis, I've been stopped, you know, for 
unnecessary reasons and you know it kind of makes you feel a little less than a full citizen when you know the reason why you were stopped and it was nothing to do with your actions I mean and I think that's what people don't understand I mean when you have to go through your whole life knowing that uh, you know you can be stopped just because of the way you looked I mean that's you know something about privilege that that uh, you know I think a lot of whites don't understand and while he hasn't experienced an overtly racist incident in Pine Island, Carter has noticed the Confederate and police blue line flags around town. I've seen the signs, you know, uh, the Blue Lives Matter signs, support, you know, we support the police. And I'm, I'm like, you know, okay, that's fine, but, you know, do you really understand what the issue is?